I'm done talking, just let me go. Then go! But Mia is saying. Fuck you, Harper. You are a piece fuck of shit. Fuck you, you fake African Kuta Kente. Fuck go. you, you fucking Lean. Uncle Tom Clarence. Lean, Lean. Uh, go. Stick out your go. head. Go, fuck Get you. out of my face. All right, well, we're talking the best man, the final chapters, and a popular meme that have been floating around. I think I saw it on the Shade Room and on Twitter. And it's a picture from, I believe, Shelby and Quentin's wedding at the ending of episode two. You have Harper and you have him sitting beside his wife at the time, Robin. And above Harper, it has the show villain. And above Robin, you have the actual villain. And it's a whole thing of people giving their insight on whether or not they agree or disagree. Now, let me put it this way. I don't know if, okay, first of all, I disagree with the photo itself. I disagree with the photo itself. Let, I will say this much. I think that Harper has more, I guess you could say, if you were using like a balance scale thing where it's like, you know, you put one little weight on one side and then it, you know, tilts down while the other one raises up if we're using a balance scale between these two i'd say there will be more weights on harper's side than robin's side with that i mean harper to just really sum it up i think that harper had so many opportunities to give robin just a fraction of the support that she had given him over the years and i mean when you look at the first movie and then the second movie, and of course the series, you'll see that these two, in my opinion, never really should have gotten married in the first place. Because, long story short, I think that Robin was not the right match for Harper. I think Harper and, you know, Jordan had a better dynamic than Harper did with robin that's just my opinion i think that honestly i'd have put up a poll i think a lot of people feel the same way those two should have ended up together as opposed to harper and robin i think one of the most defining moments of the two in this series was when um the guy from the food market um i'm trying to figure out his name because i wrote it down uh jaha j-a-h-a he was like the young guy who I, honestly, I thought that we would actually see, we would actually see Robin having an affair with him, but no, she, it was pretty much, you know, if she was a cougar and he was eye candy, that kind of thing, but it was when he recommended like this old jazz club that is, you know, put, is, it's on the market and this could be a great place for your restaurant spot, you know, Robin's Nest, I feel like this could be a great way to you know, give back to the community, but you would have a professional, you know, um, business, you know, you could actually get more eyes on the business, which in turn could, you know, donate more to the community. But it was a situation where I believe, you know, Harper was out of town for a while, like working on a project and whatnot. Maybe it was the movie or another book, but basically he was MIA for like the new year's episode. I think that episode took place between what December 27th and, um, New Year's Eve, New Year's Day. And I think, you know, you had Robin doing videos and sending them to Harper to show him like, oh, this is the property and I need you to look at it. Like, you know, we need to look at this right here, right now. And I can agree with some people who feel like, you know, yeah, it was like a sight unseen kind of thing where it's like you can expect Harper to put up that much money to buy this property if he had never, never seen it before. But at the same time, he kind of ignored her because of the fact that I think that um, she was like saying, hey, could you talk to this property manager? Could you speak with this person, that person? And he said he was on it. But next thing you know, I think it was um, New Year's Eve at Shelby and Quentin's party that she got the text saying uh, from Jaha saying, hey, I'm sorry, but the property already sold. And she was upset about it because it meant a lot to her. But at that point, you could tell that she felt like her desires, her goals didn't have the same amount of importance to Harper that they did to her because you could tell she was always putting her wants and desires aside to support her man. 
But then it got to a point where the success of Harper got too big to ignore. Like, for example, when you had Robin wanting to take the family for a month to Ghana in Africa, you know, so she can get in touch with her spirit, her culture. But of course, learning more about recipes and whatnot and being more... You you really saw that from like episode one to the end where we have moments where it's just robin and she's like meditating and you can have those moments where oh you can tell she's really getting you know in tune with her spirit i mean hell at the end of episode uh what was it episode one or close to the end of episode one where she jumped not not the ending because i know the ending of episode one was shelby but basically she wanted to move to the destination spot that quentin was going to have his wedding at and Robin, I mean, Harper was like, wait, wait, what do you mean? Like, move down here? And you can kind of tell at the beginning of the series, these two, there was a rift in these two in their journey. They were both kind of going in different directions where you had Harper who wanted more and more, but he wasn't going in the same direction of Robin who wanted, Robin wanted to kind of keep her feet on the ground. Harper wanted to soar into the atmosphere, that kind of thing. And you could tell like, for me personally, I feel like a moment that defined like, yeah, these two will not make it was when Robin got arrested during a protest and Harper was just enraged because number one, they, you know, she put their daughter at risk because uh, during the montage, when we would see between the years of like 2016 to 2022, you know, during different matters of like, oh, George Floyd, Black Lives Matter, you know, and we would see Robin during multiple protests front and center. And, you know, of course, you know, they would get back to the community and what was it? I think 25% of what they earned, they would get back to different causes and whatnot. You could tell that there was a rift there where you had them both working for the community in different ways where you didn't want Harper becoming a sellout. He wanted to write material that would be beneficial and inspiring to black people as well as making it, you know, at the top of the charts, say black writer. But then you had Robin who wanted to get, I guess you could say, get her hands dirty more by being in the trenches with other black people. It's like, you know, the difference between Black Panther T'Challa and Black Panther to um, Killmonger, where you had one person who wanted to play it safe from a palace versus the other person who wanted to be down in the trenches to fight the fight with other black people. So it's really kind of no, it's just debatable on who was right and who was wrong in that situation. But I think for me, and this is just me, if I were a husband and I had a wife and a kid, I wouldn't feel comfortable with having my young child, young, at a protest because even you know oh it's our legal right to be here we did we met him we, you know we gathered in peace watching the news the video footage the trending topics the photos of how these kind of peaceful protests can turn into just violent rallies and crap at the drop of a hat nah like that would have been a problem we would have squashed that right then and there no debate like first of all I wouldn't want you out there as my wife because it's like, you know, anything could have happened. I can't stop you from fighting, you know, a just cause, but we got to change our um, methods. I'm, I might, you know, get some people to disagree with me on this and, and that's okay. There's going to be, there are different ways to fight the battle. Not everyone's going to think the same. It's like Martin Luther King and Malcolm X, how they both view certain things. But I think that, you know, for someone as strong in the community as Robin, you know, yeah, I can definitely see her being more in tune of, you know, standing at the front lines. But when you look at how much good you are doing, which, you know, the um the food you give back to the community and whatnot and, you know, doing this and that, I think that um, what good is it if you're behind bars? Like, you know, or what happens if you get shot or something like that on the front lines? Like, then what, you know? But I feel like, their spirits really didn't align. I just felt like there was always conflict where you could tell that Robin just suppressed her spirit, her dreams and goals to support her man. But at the same time, when you look at Harper, yeah, because he even got called out by like Quentin, I mean, not Quentin, um, Julian later on that 
everything you do is about yourself. How many times have you, you know, when it comes to doing what you want to do for your career versus your family and their needs, you always pick yourself. And is he a villain for that? Look, I don't know. It depends on what you look for in a, a loving relationship and a marriage. He does say he's doing it for his family, but I could see it as a way where he did it for himself. Because guess what? His wife didn't want a castle. His wife didn't want to move to West Side. She wanted to stay with her people. But it's not wrong for a husband to want to provide for his family. But at the same time, it got to the point where one uh, rescheduling this and that, you know, it became more of a, hey, I need to do this to suit my needs. But like I said, later on, when it got to the point like the movie blowing up in the sequel, you can't say no to that. When the iron's striking hot, you got to, you know, strike while the iron's hard, get that money. But there were just so many opportunities where Harper could have given just a little bit of leeway to his wife. Because, yeah, a whole month away in Ghana... Yeah, that is a bit much. It would have been different if it's like there was no com there was no compromise with Harper. That's the biggest thing. It was his way. It's not even I can't even say it was his way or no way at all. It was always his way. Jordan was always the one who had or excuse me, Robin was always the one who had to make the sacrifices. But it's just one of those things where if we're looking at the villain, I didn't think it was kind of messed up to like take their daughter to a whole different continent. This isn't like you know, like he said, look, I was okay with co-parenting because I thought you were living down the block or something. You're talking about living in another part of the world. The door is always open. Yeah, but you... I thought that was pretty messed up. Like I said, there should have been a compromise. Like, look, um, baby, I know you're going for a whole month, but I can't go a whole month because Hollywood's calling. But what I can do is I can pull some strings. I can go with you and our baby to Ghana for like, a week or two weeks or a week. How about that? I feel like that would have been a better compromise than constantly answering the phone and being like, Jordan, not Jordan. I keep saying Jordan. Robin, I'm sorry, but I can't make it because of this and that. When they started going to therapy, I thought that was a good way to save it because thankfully the therapist was able to, um, you know, verbalize the whole, look, you can't expect your partner to be a mind reader. So you suppressing, you know, how you felt about certain things that isn't helping because How's your husband supposed to know that you were able to, or, or you know, he, he, she, he wanted you to be, you wanted him to be there for this situation, that situation. But then again, there are a lot of times where, and I think Harper even expressed this, admitted to it during the therapy session that, yeah, I have been focusing too much on my career without really showing, you know, Robin the support she gives me. Because, yeah, I wouldn't have anything if it wasn't for her. But I do feel like when it comes to these two, the communication was always off. Where it felt like whenever Robin was excited about something and would tell her husband about it, it kind of felt like she was talking a million miles a minute and wanted him to support. Her. It's almost like she wanted him to blindly support her. But at the same time, he always had his head down. When she was trying to talk to him, it's like, you know, she was in his face trying to tell him, hey, I feel this way about this. But he always had his head down because he was looking at his phone. He was, you know, taking notes for a book. So these two never really had that real conversation. They always kind of blew up at each other. The moment that really defined it was after she got out of jail um, for the protest. And then I think she read some of the notes that he had jotted down for a book and she got emotional and she agreed to move to the West Side because it felt like neither one of them were good at communicating. Jordan would suppress how she felt about things. I'm sorry. Robin would suppress how she felt about things without telling Harper and blindly support him to show that, you know, she loved him while kind of carrying the weight and bitterness of it. There was resentment between, you know, Robin and Harper, because even though he was successful, she resented the fact that, you know, she didn't really get the same support from him. But you could argue what was in the first episode when, you know, I think her social media following was blowing up for Robin's Nest. Um, Harper did suggest having, you know, a different set of hands or, you know, other people to help her out, but she kind of scoffed at the idea. So it almost felt like he thought that, you know, 
hey, you know, between taking care of our daughter and, you know, doing your business and whatnot, maybe it wouldn't hurt to have someone else to help you out along the way. But, you know, she wasn't really here for that. So it just felt like um, you have a difference in ideas. But on top of that, you have another situation where Robin felt like, yeah, she really wouldn't communicate the way she felt. But when she wrote or when she read with Harper as written, Harper, it's like, he writes these books and it feels like the world gets a taste or the world understands how he feels towards his family via his writing. And it wasn't until Robin read what he had written on that paper that she understood that the success and moving up, you know, it was actually about the family for the family and to protect his family. So if Harper communicated to Robin, how he felt about their family and their marriage, the same way he's able to express himself in his writing, I think these two would have definitely sustained, um, you know, whatever obstacles came their way. But it always felt like instead of Robin being by Harper's side, it always felt like she was behind it. It's like the family outside of his career, everything else was second place. That's what it felt like. And when you look at it, Robin just never really clicked with the group at all because, you know, there was always some silent animosity with Jordan where, you know, she kind of like tolerated Jordan because, you know, hey, her husband. But then on the flip side, I think there was the one episode where Jordan was dealing with being called a sellout and whatnot, and Shelby was trying to give advice, and, you know, Candace was trying to give advice, and then every time that Robin wanted to give advice, she was kind of shut down. It kind of let me know that, yeah, she doesn't really click with the group. So, these two really weren't soulmates, but in terms of which one was the villain, I would say that Harper definitely came across more as the actual villain, but then again, you know, Robin had a few skeletons in the closet, I mean, hell, think of it this way. Him and Jordan were about to get it on, if not from the call from Shelby about Quentin being in the hospital. Robin had, you know, googly eyes from Jahad from the market, but as far as we know, they never really had sex. So which one of them is the real villain? Just saying. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Like and subscribe, and I will talk to you in the next video.